Ontario, Canada. A vast, remote, untamed wilderness chock full of fish and wild game. It is truly a sportsman's dream, which is why last fall my family and I crossed over the border twice for the thrill of bow hunting. First, for my wife Chris and young daughter Carly, in late August, was an archery bear hunt near the town of Emo, Ontario. I don't think sometimes people realize how long it takes to put out 60 ladder stands and, and uh, pick them back up again, you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's all fun. <laughs> yeah, it's all fun. Beginning long before they ever arrived, then enough can be said about the preparations Border Country Outfitters puts in to ensure a successful hunt. I'd say we got a full day's work. We got about 14, 15 stands to go yet. Yep. I think a careful site preparation is the key. Now a big push, and up we go with 70 pounds. All you right. got the rope down, chain on. She's All good. Set. Looks good now. Shooting lanes clear. Log piles in place. Pull up ropes down. This is ready to go. 40, what left? Six? 46 to go. See, we don't have any fun when we go bear hunting, do we? Oh, none at all. <laughs> Chris prioritized her goals for this hunt from the very start. First and foremost in Chris's mind, even above taking a black bear with a bow herself, was to fuel her daughter's interest in bow hunting. And what better way to mentor our young people than to set aside some alone time, lead by example, and share thrilling outdoor experiences to fire up their enthusiasm. And as you're about to see, Ontario black bear hunting certainly has all the makings to do exactly that. Carly, what's the yardage to the rock? The lock is 16.5. You know, bear hunting is so, so exciting. You're hunting them at such close range. I mean, they're just so close. It's so exciting. It's been awfully quiet since we've been in the stand. I bring Carly along because I, I am a firm believer that you take your family hunting and fishing with you, and now it's a tradition with Carly. There's no way I could come up to Border Country Outfitters without Carly, and that's, that's a good thing. Carly, there comes one right over there. I like coming here to hunt with my mom because there's so many bears, like no matter what night, you almost always see something. so happy for her. I was so proud of her for doing such a good job and making such a good shot. We have a bear, we have a bear. <laughs> good job. That it only ran just a little ways. That's a massive hole. <laughs> Great broadheads really do some damage, don't they? Wow. Ooh, we did it, honey, we did it again. Yeah. She was so happy and that's the best thing about it is if she's happy, I'm happy. You know, if there ever was a surefire prescription to make a hunter lose total control and fill his or her britches, the sight of an enraged running bull moose within bow range was made to doctor's orders. He's the absolute largest undisputed king of all big game mammals in all of North America. Which brings us to our second hunt for today, northwestern Ontario, near the town of Atacokan during the September archery moose season last fall. 
The story all began with substantial gearing up at her home in Brainerd, Minnesota. Here we are, headed on another adventure for Outdoor Secrets. Um, this one is going to be particularly special. My wife and I are bow hunting public land up in Ontario uh, for moose. And we're going to be camping out and living right with them and hopefully taking a couple of them home that uh, are going to live with us. But join us, you'll enjoy this one. Okay, I gotta get my gear here. When I do my hunts, usually, uh, you know, daylight's, you know, breaking probably around 6.30. So, you know, we're getting up at four o'clock in the morning, you know, having a quick cup of coffee, loading up the gear and heading out. I'm gonna take you out in front. I'm gonna stay with Babe, the rut pit. I love two hunters because I can, I can always set one in an ambush mode and one is always with me. Make sure you can shoot the road and shoot the swamp, okay? That bull moose is coming to the call. You have to have your hunter very close to you. Okay, we got Larry over here calling here. The other person being out, uh, you know, maybe 70, 80 yards. His plan is to have the moose come through me and come down to him where he's calling. I tell my hunters, if you hear a grunt coming in, that moose is coming direct to me. When the moose goes by, you stick it. Doesn't seem like too much action. There's six calls, I haven't had nothing. So I'm gonna try another spot. But this big old machine walks right up at like a oh, yeah, yeah. pavement. The reason I, I picked this area has a lot of vegetation. There's been a lot of old cutovers, a lot of growth, lots of feed in the area. Water is the main thing that moose hang around. If I got a moose coming, I'll be circling around you to bring him in, okay? And calling from the water, you know, you get your call out, you know, a mile, two miles, three miles. When I set up to do the call, I usually do two distinct long calls and, and two short calls. I try to get it out in three directions. I've had great success doing it every 20 minutes. I'm just quiet. Now some clouds are rolling in again. I wonder if we're gonna have rain again. Try though we may over the first days of her hunt, strong winds and rain stifled any reaction from a single bull moose to Larry's sweet melodic calls. You know, this machine is so nice because we got all of our stuff in here, all three of us yep. together and plenty of room. Then finally, everything settled down and Larry took us into an area he'd been saving until the conditions were right. The area I was concentrating on, it was a, it was a, fairly, um, a fairly new cut. As, as a matter of fact, it was last winter's cut. This is a spot. Oh, there, here, Chrissy. We weren't actually in the cut. We went into into the into the heavy, you know, into the spruce and the into the Labrador tea area where where moose like it, it was an excellent excellent spot. Slowly, slowly make our way over here, okay? Because I want to call it this point, okay? Because the wind's coming this way, okay? I had a little lake. We were getting a south wind, and it was perfect. I was in a in a grassy swale. Where do you think the moose is going to come from? Is it up through here? Or up through here? It's coming down through this opening, anyways. There was lots of sign in there, so I knew there had to be moose. Larry's sitting with Babe over by the lake. I'm in between two swamps. I mean, there's beds everywhere. With so many moose in the area, eventually one of them wants to come in and investigate, and that's what happened. It's not getting true. All of a sudden, it sounded like a freight train was coming down this hill. I mean, knocking trees down, and you could hear just brush rustling and branches breaking. And he'd come down and smashing trees and everything else. He was 40 or 50 yards away from me. I could hear him, I could hear him breathing, and I couldn't see him. Now, Chris, on the other hand, she's by the bull. He's 30 yards from her. Like 30 yards away he was. And he just turned his head like this, that's all he could see. And I mean, he was completely covered with brush, so there was no way of shooting him. He just turned his head and he just disappeared. Like he never even existed. I thought I was gonna hear an arrow there, but uh, you know, they had, they had it close enough to shoot, but he just didn't step in the, in, the right, in the right spot. Well, after the rain finally subsided, we decided that big bull didn't know that we had been there. We didn't spook him, he just finally turned around and went out, so we said, let's go down there and try and set up again. All right, God willing. That night, another beautiful night. Well, you're going up where they were. I had a little little more breeze, but we use the wind, we use the wind to our advantage. I'm gonna try and get you deeper so your scent goes deeper. If he comes across, you're gonna be south of him. Babe ended up sitting exactly where I was, and I went further up into the swamp. Right in a perfect ambush situation. We're actually moved in further to cut the moose off. My longest range here will be about 50, 52 yards. 
If he steps out, I mean, should have any problem taking him. We're down in the swamp. We walked off a of high ground to get down in here. There's big spruce thickets and higher ground all the way around us and swamp intermingled between. You have no idea which direction he's gonna come from. I'd been calling and it was, it was, you know, 7.30 was, that was the end of the shooting time and it was about 10 after seven. I hadn't heard nothing and I thought, man, oh man, this is a, a you know, beautiful area. Another night, they're just not responding to the call. I'm always told that, God, when a moose comes in, it's gonna be crashing and it's gonna be making all sorts of sounds and noises. And this guy came in so silent, it was like a ghost. I mean, he was just all of a sudden there. I didn't even know the moose was there. I had no idea. There he was, just there. Didn't make hardly one sound. They heard a branch break. Wow. Yes, 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 yes. And all of a sudden, he just steps out. He's 50 yards, and I couldn't be happier. Oh, Larry. I heard, I heard the arrow. Oh, I, heard, I, heard, I heard it go, and I heard a smack. It was her first moose. It's only a moose oh, race. Yeah, it's only a three-quarter of a ton <laughs> animal coming. It's hard to describe. Now what do we do? We're gonna find him, and then the work begins. There's a couple trails here. We started tracking, and no blood, no blood. I, I thought, oh geez, and you know this looks like the path he's taken. You could see where you know broke sticks, and it's definitely the path he's taken. And then we found, as a matter of fact, we found the arrow after probably about 50 yards. We found the arrow. Oh, well, there well, it how is. Far yeah. Did, how far did it go down? How far yeah. did it go in? There's, you got blood right up to here. After finding the arrow, we could track it a little bit and, you know, f probably 15 or 20 yards from the arrow, uh, there was a moose that was piled up and it was a good sight to see. <laughs> there he is! Oh my God! Look at <laughs> so, Found her, man! Larry, I got him! There's your first move right on, Chrissy. Congratulations. Oh. Very good. Put it there, baby. Look at how Holy big he is. Geez. Look at the Her. rack on that guy. Look at how different he is. <laughs> He's got drop tines. I haven't seen too many moose racks like that, Chrissy. <laughs> I'm telling you. I love it. Oh, Larry, thank you him. so much. We got him. Look at the hole in that, Chrissy. Isn't you, it? See, you see, you got her in the lungs. Hey, a little high, but look at look at the froth in here and stuff. I tell you, those rage very nice. Rage titanium sure make a hole. Oh. Baby, don't they? <laughs> they don't go very far. Oh, wow, what a good, huge good animal! Good job, good job, Chrissy. I'll tell you, when I started hunting with my bow, I wanted to get a moose. I cannot believe how different this rack is—an elk and a bear. Uh, this is an older moose. He's kind of on his downhill downhill slant right now. Eh? Well, now I've got two bears, an elk, and I've finally got my moose. And I, I can't tell you, it is the coolest, coolest hunt I've ever been on. It was awesome. Congratulations, oh, Chrissy. Oh, Larry, <laughs> thank you so much. Look at, look at the colors coming in. Day after day, focus on prime cutover areas. Strategically set up and call during morning and evening hours. And when you do get an opportunity, Keep your cool enough to deliver a precise killing shot. Wow. Very basically, that's how to get a massive Ontario bull moose. Now, getting them out of the dense Canadian bush after all that? Well, that's another story in itself. I knew we were quite a ways, you know, from, from any road. and We had to get the moose out, so the fun began. In the cuddle, we found some smaller spruce and that were laying down, they were dead already, so we cut four of them and we took our straps and we strapped two together to make a little path across the creek. We got the trike on top and off we went. <laughs> we made it across the creek, we got the other side and it was all Labrador key, two, two feet, three feet. We drove her right in, we backed her up to the moose, we 
The box came up, folded down. We brought the head up into the box. We come along to the rails and left the box up, hooked on her, and off we went and went right out. With that uh, side by side, that uh, player side by side, it was it, it it helped so much. You know, basically there was two guys, and we actually in two hours we had a, a whole moose out of the bush and into the back into the back of the trailer in two hours. I mean, <laughs> everybody should have a machine like that. I mean, it it, it was excellent. It it did it did the job. Or we would have been hauling her out by quarters. And uh, it's Saturday morning now, and we could still be hauling it out right now. <laughs> A special thanks to Canoe Canada Outfitters, who set us up with that spectacular archery bow hunt near Atacokan, Ontario last fall. And also to Border Country Outfitters for providing the opportunity for Chris to bring Carly along on that exciting black bear hunt we saw earlier. As parents, hoping to instill hunting as a lifelong love, we feel it's important to expose her to shooting sports and hunting as much as possible. In this case, a little family planning provided an experience that's already got her making plans to go bear hunting in Ontario, goal achieved. Another great place for young people to get started in hunting and the shooting sports is the National Shooting Sports Foundation. I can't say enough about the NSSF and all they do to promote, protect, and preserve these outstanding outdoor activities. At www.nssf.org, you'll discover an awesome variety of educational materials, videos, hands-on programs, and state-by-state -state events that anyone can get involved with. I'm very passionate about promoting hunting and all of the shooting sports because I've seen the positive impact these outdoor activities can have on people's lives, not the least of which has been my own family. And remember, it only takes a spark to get a fire going, my friends. I'm Babe Winkleman. Thanks for watching, and until next time, everybody, hey, good hunting.